All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Smart City Water. I am Jason Mahoudi, a technical specialist and responsible for VO and VO swim in Smart City Water. And also we have Dr. Alicia Go here. Um, she is the product owner, uh, the head of technical and development team of Smart City Water associated with Visual IFIMO, VO swim and data current. Um, I'm going to talk briefly. Uh, I'm going to start uh, the uh, presentation or let's say our webinar and then pass it to Alicia. Uh, so make sure that you uh, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn because the next sessions of these webinar series are going to be posted on our Twitter as well as our LinkedIn. I'm going to share the link of both LinkedIn and Twitter on the chat. So make sure you also have the chat option open. Uh, so if you also have any question, feel free to ask those question. You can uh, just type the question on the chat and we're going to, uh, if we still have time at the end, we're going to follow up and address those question at the end. Um, I'm going to post and uh, share with you the link of our LinkedIn as well as Twitter. So these webinars are free, so make sure you share it with your friends, with your colleagues. If you have other people from other consulting firm or conservation authorities or municipalities, friends from everywhere in the globe, just make sure uh, you send it to them. You share it with them. They can come enjoy the sessions free and it's mostly for the people who are living in the same time zone of ours. It's lunch and learn, so you can eat your lunch and learn uh, some good stuff. So the next session is going to be on May 25th. Um, so it is every other Wednesday that we have these webinars. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn to be posted. And then uh, so again, I'm announcing that I already shared with you guys the license file. Um, so make sure you activate because right now it is active. So make sure you add the license, install the license, uh, the software and add the license to the software. And uh, you can also practice. You have three days to practice. Uh, the license expiry is on May uh, 14th. Make sure you uh, check out the software if you are not our client, because some of you guys are already our clients, so you have the software, it's OK. You can just use that software. And if not, just make sure you add the license to the software and then practice what Dr. Alicia Gao is going to explain. And if you have any question, feel free to reach out to us. We're always there for you. And uh, so I feel like that is it. I'm going to pass uh, to Dr. Alicia Gao. Um, and uh, I would uh, love to hear from her. Great, Jason. Thank you. Okay. People are still checking, so you think we can start right away? We go. We wait a couple more minutes. I I believe, because uh, we want to be on time as well. Mm -hmm. uh, again, yep. this session is going to be recorded, and we're going to post it on our website in 24 hours. So whoever joins a bit like later than anticipated or expected before, just feel free to go back and uh, or in 24 hours, feel free to go and check out the video if you've missed something or if you had a, uh, I don't know, misconnection or something like that, feel free to check out the video in 24 hours on our website. Great, okay. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> okay. So let me know if someone cannot see the presentation. So I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah, it's perfect. It's great. Okay, so today that's our first seminar, as Jason introduced. Uh, so this one I'll give you some general introduction and uh, about software and also about the modern practice. So you can you can then practice them in your in your software in your uh, like you have a, a trial license now, so you can use them to see if that can help you to do your daily work. OK, so the presentation I kind of break down into three A parts. So first I will just quickly refresh about our urban water system, uh, what challenge that people may have when they are uh, creating a model, when they are managing a project. 
And then I will give you some tips and uh, recommendations when you build your project or, or create your model. And the third part is some um, FAQ that we have received from our, our current users. So I think this one may be also helpful for you. Uh, so I, I know that the, the participants today, it's like uh, some of them are like new users, like uh, who never used VO before, or it's long time ago they used VO, and some of them are our existing customers. Uh, so I will try to, I will try to accommodate the needs for both uh, both parties, new users and uh, uh, experienced users. I hope this one can be helpful for you guys. And meanwhile, rather like uh, in for future webinars, if you have any questions or any recommendations or specific uh, topics that you would like to learn to know, please let us know so we will arrange that in our future webinars. So first, let's go to the first part. So just quickly refresh right on um, what is the urban water system. So I draw a, a, a simple schematic uh, uh, schema here. So you see like it's a quite a complex system here. So you have uh, many components when we are talking about urban water systems. So you have the precipitation, either it's rain or it's snow, so it's precipitation. And then you can drop down on the watershed. So that means you will have a watershed management. So you will manage the watershed, any natural water bodies like a river, the wetland. So that's like one part. And then of course you have a city. We have uh, uh, those uh, in, because of the increasing of the population. So there will, for sure it will be a challenge about the city, about its uh, uh, stormwater management, and also about the uh, household sewage connection and the wastewater treatment. And then when uh, everything will be kind of uh, after treatment will be discharged. We know it will be discharged finally into the, uh, 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 the environment, either it's a river or it's a lake. And then we will also have the uh, water treatment that we will uh, uh, treat the uh, so the, the they will distribute and treat the water and distribute it to the each household. So that's like a drinking water drinking water distribution. So in general, you can say that there are many aspects, many uh, components here. So when we create a model, so we have to uh, there will be a lot of challenges here. For example, as I mentioned later, we will say that one thing is like how do you dis describe, how you define your scope. But today, right now, we are just going to focus on the the top four. So about the watershed management and the river, and of course, and also uh, like the other um, <clears throat> uh, components and the uh, wetland. And the second is about the stormwater connection, and then it's about the wastewater, like uh, uh, sewage and the wastewater connection and the treatment. First about the watershed management, just about itself, we can say that there are many, also many other dimensions that we need to think about when you create a model. The first question that uh, it's like whether it's a short term process or it's a long term process, it's a seasonal process. So you are focused on like a, a typically like a few hour uh, rain events. So you want to know uh, uh, like especially like under a design stone. So what's uh, a system will respond? So it's like a short term, very intense uh, rainfall. So what's a, uh, what's a, what's a, a, a runoff from this uh, short term and intense rainfall? So that's uh, that's one aspect. And another side, you want to learn something like a long term perspective, like a long term process, like seasonal changes of the temperature, uh, the snow melting, snow accumulation, and uh, the exchange with uh, with the underground waters, and infiltration and uh, evaporation. This is like a long term process, right? So you want to model that. So that means you want to run like a continuous, like a, a larger scale, like <clears throat> as described in this figure. So I personally like this one very, very well because it kind of explains you like what's the scope between like a single event and the continuous uh, a process or, or project. So that's like a water watershed management. So on the other hand, if we're talking about the urban, like like the street, the household, the buildings, it's really about the city. So we can say like it's about the urban drainage and the sewer system. So in this in this process in this scope we also have many many things to think about. <clears throat> so first let's review what the process we have here. So of course you have a precipitation, precipitation drop on the land, and then you have the overland flow, uh, like on on the street on on the road. So that's overland flow, 
And then you have the storm because the overland flow will be captured by these catch basins and connected by the storm sewer. So that's like the storm water management. And lastly, you have also have the infiltration, inflow and the infiltration, which we learn the terminology as NI that will occur in the sanitary sewer. So the sanitary sewer uh, by its design, right? The purpose of sanitary, the main purpose function is to uh, connect the, the, the wastewater, the household water from each buildings, like residential of uh, these buildings. But uh, but under a rain event, uh, there may be some inflow infiltration that will enter uh, into the sanitary sewer, which can reduce your sewer capacity. And uh, that's why we also want to know what's uh, uh, I and I uh, for the sanitary sewer. So from this graph, you can see that there are also many interactions, many components happening in this uh, urban drainage and the sewer uh, system. So how do we model all those uh, process? So in general, right, when we, we, uh, we can say that in general, the urban water system modeling can be categorized by application area, whether it's like a, a watershed management or it's about the urban urban uh, city, like a uh, sewer, sewer modeling. And also about the time scale, if it's just or you focus on a short term, like uh, intensive rain, uh, rainfall, like you want to know what's the risk, this kind of uh, strong storm can bring to our system. Or you are, or you are more focused on the like, long term impact, uh, like the uh, water balance, the water loss, like um, um, typically maybe around like uh, several months or even multiple years. And uh, and uh, also second, when we create a model, normally we have uh, solved the questions written from uh, different uh, parties. So you have to first you have to follow the uh, guideline, right? The government they have their uh, requirement, they have their index, they have their criteria that you must uh, co comply with. And they normally they will also ask you to build a model to follow in like which type of data you should uh, consider, which type of ring data you should consider uh, to test your, uh, uh, your control, your, your mitigation strategies. And also the model itself, right? It's about the model selection as I just described. So there are many scales, many aspects to consider when you select the model. And uh, uh, the model input, so as we normally know that to build a model, uh, which data, it also depends on which type of data you have and how many you have. So you can you can know what, which type of input you can give to your model. And finally about the result analysis. So you, you analyze the, the modeling results to say if that can satisfy the requirement and do you need a further adjustment to your model or to adjustment to your control strategies. So in general, I kind of uh, summary like uh, five questions that people may ask, uh, because uh, there could be more. So I just summarize uh, why I think which one I think is very important when, you, when we consider to creating a model or project. So first, how do I select uh, a, a proper model for my for my project? And uh, and uh, my project in some cases we heard that uh, uh, from our clients that the project is quite small. So in this case, I may don't have so many information. I don't have so much data. Like for example, I don't have a shape file. So how do I create a model? And and third one is like, uh, uh, how do I design or I, how do I get the design stone for my regions? And this is also a question that we heard a lot from our users. And the the last uh, the uh, the fourth one is like, um, so normally when we manage a a, a project. Uh, if it's uh, like a, a medium or a larger size, normally we have uh, multiple scenarios and uh, we have uh, many data sources and how can we manage them efficiently? And uh, lastly, and also very important is that uh, in the end we want to meet the uh, regulatory requirement and how can I quickly assess uh, if my design or planning can satisfy those requirements? So this type of questions I think it's quite uh, uh, typical when we when people creating a model for the urban water system. So in this case, we kind of suggest you several uh, two, uh, tips, so several tips of pra modeling practice. So first, uh, we when we select model, we should uh, select model and uh, modeling method based on its uh, scope, uh, and also which how many how much data you have, your data availability, and uh, second. And uh, it's better to manage your different scenarios, either it's the existing scenario 
a post uh, development, uh, you have some proposed development plan and you have some control mitigation measures, everything, right? You try to spend your management in one project and also including any projections that are required by the, by the regulation. So it's better to manage every scenarios in one project. So in this case, it's much easier for you later on to do any comparisons and analysis. And the third one is like, uh, because we are like, we are living in an area that it's like a booming of data information. So, so there are so many data. So it's important to say that we try to manage and share and reuse data in a centralized data center. Instead of one data here or another data in another place, in, in like in uh, like in different folders and locations. So uh, that's why we suggest that we try to manage all those data in a, in a centralized data center. And uh, and uh, and then next is to modeling the mod uh, analyze the modeling the results following the government guidelines. Uh, this is because when you submit the model for review, this is uh, quite important, right? So anything that you design or propose should uh, comply with those uh, requirements. And the uh, last one is uh, 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 since we if, if you have some GIS or DM, so to utilize those advanced tools can really help you to understand your project and get more information from those GIS information and DEM information. So in total, we have five of, uh, of uh, modeling practice and tips here. And I'm going to explain to you one by one and later on, so how uh, our software will and will swing can, can help you, right, to, to solve those, to fit those uh, uh, tips and the, uh, to satisfy those uh, uh, needs. So first, uh, I want to go through quickly for some uh, new users may, may not be familiar with VO, so about uh, what is the VO suite and where, where do we come from? So first version was created in US and uh, the name at that time was HIMO. So HIMO means hydrological model. And then, the, uh, and then it came to the Ontario and uh, the University of Ottawa had made some great improvement uh, from that original HIMO model and then it was the, the, then the name was changed to Ottawa right? OTT. So OTT here means University of Ottawa. And then that's just the engine part, right? Like you have a bunch of equations and you solve them um, by the computer. That's just engine part. But for the model or engineer, the, another important thing is like a, a GUI, the interface, the interaction between, that's the interaction between the user with the engine. So without a good GUI, it will be very challenging for people to finish their work quickly. And that's why the importance of the GUI is to help you to create a model and help you to, uh, to view the results and do any sort of analysis. So first GUI came in in 1998. And, uh, and then we have a very improved that uh, because we understand the, for the users, right? And end users, the GUI is those tools, those features, are also very important on top of that uh, uh, the engine side. So that's why we have spent a lot of time to improve the GUI. But meanwhile, we also made some uh, uh, improvement on the single event uh, uh, engine. So, so far, right, no matter it's HIMO or HIMO, it's all about single event. As I, if you remember, I explained before. So the single mean, event means that you focus on uh, like a short term, like intense windfall, like design storm. Like you want to see what the uh, system will, will happen under those type of uh, like a disaster level of uh, rain event. So that's kind of a single event uh, project mostly used uh, uh, for. But, but meanwhile, uh, we also want to study about the long term impact. Uh, so that's why we have uh, created uh, a continuous engine in Otaimo. And also we have uh, bring in this uh, ID function in Otaimo. So at that time, uh, that means we have uh, both single event and continuous capability and plus LID uh, function features in the software. And then in 2020, we further expand our product to include uh, a Swim 5, EPS Swim 5 engine. And uh, that means under one installer, we will have both Autimo engine and, and, and the Swim 5 engine. And uh, those two are, are, are different, as we know that they have uh, different uh, applications uh, in some areas. So 
in general, that HIMO, the HIMO is used for like planning level project and the swing file is mostly used for the design level project. And I'll give you more examples here. So this is a, a comparison between those two. So all the HIMO most time is used for like a watershed study. So you want to analyze, especially about you want to analyze the water balance and there is like water, uh, like especially about wetland. If you have wetland in your in your uh, in your area and you want to know the impact from the development on that wetland, uh, this is a re really recommend you to use the uh, Otimo. And uh, and then we have several application example here. First about the watershed water balance, right? It's about telling you about how the uh, water is routed. It's a um, is a uh, is shared between different uh, process, and then we have the wetland the water balance, and uh, and we also have the analyzer tool to analyze the water uh, wetland hydro period and the inflow mass analysis, and we also have the er erosion analysis for the uh, stream, and you can also do the treatment train analysis, and the last but. Also important about uh, you can use the Otimo for the flood, uh, flood control and the flood flow. Uh, you can use that uh, together with the high grass uh, to do some flood mapping. So that's Otimo part. On the other hand, it's about the wheel swing. So wheel swing, as we know, uh, we built from the swim file. So if you know swim file, we know that that's a, that's a software uh, mostly used for the sewer modeling. So swill swing can, can be used for any type of sewer, separate, combined, sanitary, or uh, storm sewer. And also we use swing for the door drainage modeling. So it means you model both overland and underground sewer uh, together. Because as I described at the beginning, right, you want to analyze for the one analyze the manhole and I, the sewer inflow and the infiltration. And you want to say if there is a, if the drainage system is working very well. Uh, there is only a combined sewer overflow, this type of thing, right? You want to, that's why you want to model both system, overland system and the sewer system together. So that's why we have the dual, dual change modeling here. Also, the uh, swing itself, we also have the IID, and you can also use the for some urban flooding assessment. And uh, and the last, all right, so the swing, uh, the sewer system in the end is going to be fed into the uh, wastewater treatment plan. So the, the, the modeling from the uh, swing fly can be used to, to uh, uh, any applications for the wastewater inflow modeling and the control, uh, either about the quantity and also quality, water quality. So that's for the, the comparison between those two. So in general, right, we have uh, one, uh, we have a uh, two installer and uh, no, we have one installer with two engines and they share quite similar interface and the workflow as I have a screenshot, a screenshot here. And also users can import the Othimo model into a view screen. In general, right, so the product here is like, we try to build it as simple as possible for the users. That, that means uh, our end. From software development side, we have spent a lot of time uh, to do the research to understand the engineering practice so we make sure our tools can be updated with the latest regulation requirement. So uh, engineers can use them to, to test their model to see if they can satisfy those requirements. And we have efficient data and scenario management, easy to use tool, and very intuitive interface. So, so here is uh, some current users that we have. So you can see that uh, we have uh, quite some uh, uh, collaboration uh, with conservation authorities. So that's also one of the reasons that uh, uh, we try to build a model to satisfy the requirement from those uh, authorities from the government. Uh, I think so far that's it. Okay, so that's first part is like a, a refreshment on the urban water system and uh, a simple introduction about the VO. So now I'm going to uh, match those, to expand those modeling practice one by one. As I have uh, introduced before, and we kind of have five of them. So how we can use VO, use the software to satisfy those uh, modeling uh, requirements or uh, uh, the uh, practice tips. The first one is like a model for model selection. <clears throat> so first is about the scope of model. So 
I kind of uh, uh, turned that before. So here I just want to give more details. It's basically like, so scope of model means is your project focused on the water resource management and the water balance, uh, especially for the wetland and the other watershed. And rather than the design and the evaluation of the capacity of the sewer and the drainage system, so basically, those are like uh, two or four cores of the of the urban water system. So, which one is uh, the one your your main interest? And uh, and the second uh, is uh, is uh, the project concerned about the impact of the development on the watershed, on the natural water environment, and like wetland. Uh, and then you can also choose Otaimo because in Otaimo we have a special command uh, or modeling object that is especially designed for the wetland. We consult the uh, design and uh, evaluate and test that uh, in cooperation with uh, uh, TRCA. So that's why uh, we kind of recommend you to use Otaimo if your project uh, really have a wetland there, because that can kind of um, make sure that your, your project can satisfy um, kind of uh, uh, satisfy the requirement of meet the needs from the uh, government. And, and the third one is about the uh, long term or short term hydrologic process. So is it the uh, intense design storm or it want to learn about the long term and impact like a snow melting snow accumulation? So basically, uh, after you kind of understand those questions, you can select between different those projects. So it's a uh, single event, Otaimo continuous, or it's a, a swing project. And the second question you want to consider is about the uh, av availability of the data. So do I have enough data to, to create a comprehensive model on the map? So it means like uh, you have a GIS information there, or you don't have so many, because we heard that many projects, they don't have so many information. And also is the visualization on the map is a master to me. So, so you just want to say that uh, a visualization uh, to help you, or it's like a must. You cannot, uh, you cannot really get rid of it. It's a must for you. So based on those two questions, you can select the, either you want to create a model on a schematic view, or you want to create it on a map view. So here I'm going to explain you the the difference between those two. So model creates on the uh, on the uh, schematic view means like it's like more like a conceptual model. So you are focused on the uh, logic the relationship between the objects. You don't care about the their uh, real location, how they really look like on the on the ground on the surface. So it's like a schematic, uh, like a, a concept model as shown here. So you just drop and drop an icon to the canvas and build a connection line by drawing, by drawing directly drawing on the on the canvas. Right? It's arrow line here to show you the relationship between those uh, objects, but you don't say what the, how this this is a, like a catchment, right? Don't really say how it looks like on the map. So that's is called uh, the model built on a schematic view. And in Otheimer, we have a, a set of predefined commands to represent typical types of uh, hydrological objects. Like we have a uh, stun height that is used for the urban area, and uh, there is a nash height for a rural area. And also we have the wetland, uh, a special command designed for the wetland. And but also you can use it for the wheel swing, like a swing type of model. That's also okay. Like in some cases, uh, we don't have the ship file, so we just uh, want to create a simple model and do a quick test. That's that's and then that uh, schematic view is uh, perfect for you. Just drag and drop, build a connection, and run the model. But meanwhile, on the other hand, right, uh, we are in an era like everyone is uh, seeing about digital twins. So in that case, you want to bring your model um, closer as possible to your reality. So in this case, you have the shape file. And in most cases, I think that is for the source system, you have the shape file. And, and then you can create a model on the map and you will display the physical location and dimensions of those projects or, or those objects. And we also have the symbologies, right, to help you to uh, to set different colors and the shape of uh, of those uh, of those uh, geometric uh, uh, shapes on the on the map. And uh, we we can support to read and uh, calculate parameters from the GIS information. Like you can get the area, the lens, the curve number, the attachment slope, and you also can get the road or channel transect if you have the uh, DEM, the digital elevation model. 
and also many other advanced tools which I will give more explanation later. Like one here is like a DRMT uh, distributed uh, rainfall monitoring technique and uh, have a digital uh, DEM processing tools. So the second uh, tips that we have is to manage different scenarios and compare them in one project. So it's about the uh, uh, manage, uh, scenario management. So we have the in software we have a project manager. So project manager you can manage you can manage many uh, scenarios in one project. As I have here, right? I have three scenarios: existing, post, and post with mitigation uh, solutions. And I can have many other more, right? I just manage all those scenarios in one project. <laughs> and uh, below that, we have different uh, rain data, and also we have a uh, different uh, temperature data and many other data. So all those data can be used uh, for any of those scenarios, and you can create your run, your simulation run by make any combinations of those rain data or any other kind of data which we call batch run, which I will show you in the next slide. And then after you, after you run simulation and you can make comparison, right? You have three scenario and you want to compare the difference. So you can use the scenario comparison to say the difference. So the batch run, uh, as I mentioned before, right? In the, uh, in the previous slide, batch run is like, a, it's like a window here. So you can create several rounds and each of run can have their, uh, their own ring data and there are water quality data or many other data, right? If it's a continuous, you have uh, uh, other uh, rainfall uh, climate data in the panel. So you can make, make any combination, combination here, offers you a great uh, flexibility in this case. And you just need to run by one click, click this button, and then it's done. And the first scenario comparison is like you compare uh, modeling variables and also key a key criteria like uh, uh, between those scenarios in one window. Here I have uh, I have one tip here is that in this panel, right? This is a name that will be used uh, in this section. So we suggest that you, you give a unique name for those key components that you want to uh, make a comparison. Uh, the reason why I, I kind of read that here is because in the in the software, right? It allows you to give the same name for different uh, uh, objects. So in that case, for example, here you may have uh, two at height uh, nine, right? You have a uh, two that's that's allowed for the model for software itself, but it may give you some troubles when you want to make comparison. So in this case, that's why we suggest you for those key components, you give a unique name for them. So in that case, you know which one is which, so you can make comparison on this window. And the third one is about the data, about data management. So we have a resource library here. So the resource library is like a window here. So it's like a database, synchronized database that can be accessed by any of the HIMO or VO swing project. So it will organize the ring data and uh, uh, and other kind of data like um, groundwater elevation and evaporation like here, temperature and flow. Uh, so it will manage all those type of data in one uh, in one place in one <coughs> library, and you can export, you can import either a whole database or just part of them, and then you can share that with uh, with your with your team with your colleagues. So another thing I want to highlight here is about the uh, design stone. As I mentioned before, sometimes that you want to uh, generate a design stone for your for your region. So we have we do have several options for you here. And for example, you can generate the design stone based on the SCS type. So we have all the type here, and you can also generate uh, your design stone using the AES if you are if it's a Canadian project. And also we have the Chicago uh, design stone. And uh, also you, need, you can create the uh, IDF curves either by using a parameter or directly copy the IDF table. Water, con uh, water quality concentration here is based on the land use. We also give you a set of uh, predefined, like a D for TSS and TP concentration based on the land use. And the data we get is from the STEP. <coughs> STEP is an organization that uh, uh, with uh, TRCA. So you can, you can also try to take them as a reference. <coughs> Okay, next one is about uh, the result analysis. 
to the result analysis, we have the wetland hydropyrant and the erosion analysis. Those two, uh, it's kind of we also work together with the uh, with the government or TRCA, and we implement them into the software. And we have water balance for the watershed and the search, uh, surcharge analysis and the flood mapping. Here I just uh, give you uh, some examples. So first is about the erosion. So we have uh, three uh, index here, and uh, each of them you can find them in the scenario comparison. So that means you can compare your erosion index across different scenarios in one window. And we have a source surcharge analysis. So in case you want, you want to make sure that your your pipe, your your free board level is is satisfying with the government requirement. So in this case, you want to do a surcharge analysis for the sewer, and you can highlight them on the map like this one. This red means it's a surcharge, and the green means there's no surcharge. Flood mapping is like we generate a raster image. Uh, for the water depths based on the wheel stream simulation result. So it kind of can show you the flood vulnerable, flood, flood the vulnerable area under under storms. Like here you have a red means uh, it's a potentially will be higher water depths <clears throat> and green means lower. Yeah, so that's uh, flood mapping. Uh, and it's also available in the wheel stream. And the last thing is about uh, use the uh, D, uh, GIS and DM tools. So first about the distribution, distributed rainfall modeling technique, DRMT. So this tool is like you have a set of ring gauges. Like here I have a one, two, three, and you want to get the, for each I have one, two, three, four, four, five, five catchment, right? I have, but I have only three ring gauges, but I want to know what's the rainfall for each of those catchment. So that is for the DRMT. So you can, you can interpret those ring gauges into raster and uh, generate a time source rainfall for each of those catchment. That is DRMT when you have the ring gauges, right? But some cases you don't have ring gauges, but you have uh, uh, images like radar images you, you download from the website. And it, but you can also get in time source rainfall by, by, by using those uh, raster images. So that's another tool we call it Optum Rainfall from Raster. And next one is about the DEM processing. DEM means digital elevation model. So in this case, basically it's like you kind of uh, extra information like flow paths, uh, flow accumulation from the DEM. So that's a DEM file. Uh, and then just one click button on the uh, round DEM. So you will process it and tells you those flow paths and, uh, the, and the many other characters of the, of the area. And then, and then after that, you can also do a catchment delineation. So catchment delineation was done by using those information and also your uh, your definition where you want to cut those area. So it, it also it will run it for you and it will cut the entire area into several pieces as shown here, and give you the information about the area for each catchment, the slope, and the width. So in the end, so I think that's. Uh, about that, that's like uh, I kind of go through with you how you can use the software and uh, to use them into your modeling practice and some tips there. Now, next, it's about the uh, FAQ that I, I think may be helpful for you. So, first, about the uh, open and import of the Otimo project. So, first, if it's a project that was created in like uh, VO5 and uh, and you already you already have this VOPRG file, right? If you really have this VOPRG file, so that's quite easy. You just open the software and directly open it. And uh, and then of course you if you just want to import a part of project or part of scenario, it's also okay. So you just uh, import and import scenario. And next thing is like for the VO2, and you have this uh, SCE file. So in this case, you can also import it. So it's in the import and the import VO2 scenario. But make sure that you have all those uh, related project uh, files that in one folder, like especially for this one, MDR, because if you don't have this file, basically after you import, you will see that there's no connection. You will only have the command, but there's no connection. In that case, it's quite possible that <coughs> MDR file is not there or something wrong about this uh, MJOL. 
I need a re uh, registered uh, for some um, guide here. And it's also in the FAQ on the online menu. Next about is uh, Autheimer 89. And in this case, uh, it's, uh, it's a third option here. So you can import the, uh, the data file the, or the OTT file into the VO 6.2. In the end, after importing those old projects, it's uh, it's very important. Uh, we recommend that you check your ring data uh, <clears throat> because sometimes you you may find that some of the ring data is not exactly as you have, or or, uh, or it's something uh, you have a duplicate uh, ring data in one ring group. Uh, so that's why we suggest you to double check for the ring data. But for the model itself, right? For example, the the commands. And those parameters, the connections, everything uh, should be okay. Yeah, normally, it's it's uh, it will be imported correctly. Yeah. Uh, some some uh, help and uh, support system. So first, we have the on the menu and the tutorial. So we have sent you the link. And uh, if you, you have difficult to find then the yes to it, open the on the menu is in the main interface. You will click this help button. And then it will jump to the online menu. And just below the online menu, you will find the tutorial and the FAQ there. And also uh, use the help button on any of the two windows. Can also help open the, the, the support or help document for that tool specifically. Uh, customer support. So if you have any question about the software or you have a, you need any suggestion about the model or your project itself, please send us an email and we will answer you as soon as possible. Very about the license options. So as mentioned before, we have uh, two engines right now. We have Autimo, we have Wheel Swing. So you can either choose uh, uh, one of them or uh, you can choose both of them. And the second option selection is about the license type. So you can choose single license and the flexible license. Single license means that you can only have one user and that license will be locked for one computer. Basically, that one computer, we will register it, and uh, software can only be installed and used for that computer. But flexible license is like you have a floating license. You can have either one or multiple users, but uh, the maximum number really will be uh, the co <coughs> The maximum number that people can use simultaneous or concurrently will be defined by the license. There's an example here. I have five computers, right? But basically, I installed my license for all those five computers, but my license only allows three maximum. So that means I only have a three computer can use them at the same time. But if my computer too just uh, stop and close the software, then my another computer can use it. So that's uh, that is a flexible or floating license. So. Some take home message just to sum up the presentation today. So first, uh, you need you can select the model type and uh, create a model according to uh, those requirements, the, the data that you have and the scope of your of your project. So you can choose uh, a time or choose the real swing. And uh, there are two ways to create a model, a schematic view and a map view. And you can use the tool in the VO to analyze and verify how your result uh, can comply with the uh, regulation requirement. And uh, you manage different scenarios in one project. So the results of any of your control index can be compared and verified easily. And uh, also save everything, every data, all the data into a resource library before you use it in the model. So you add data to a resource library, and it's a data center before you use it in your model. So in the future, those data can be reused and can be shared with your team. Uh, in case you have some GIS and DM data, we do recommend you to use them as much as you can, because from there you can get uh, many other information. You can get uh, uh, the catchment the characteristics, you can get the flow path and, uh, and the flow and the rainfall distribution, the channel transect, etc. Finally, it's also very important is that uh, Upgrade your software and uh, and try to import those old models into the VO6.2. It's because the uh, new version, right? Not just because we have some new features or new tools. It's also because we have fixed some um, performance issues and fixed some bugs there. So in general, the new version uh, is more stable and more uh, 
helpful will be more helpful for your project. So that's why we we strongly recommend you if you are if you're an installer or your software right now is still in an old version like V5 or even lower. So we strongly recommend you to upgrade and use this V6.2. I think that's that's it from from my side and uh, I do still have some time here. <clears throat> if there are any questions, let me let us let me know. Uh, I also have the software open here. So if there's a question, let me know. But uh, if not, I will just show you quickly on, on the software itself. Thank you so very much, Lisha. Uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> we really enjoyed it. Uh, there is. There were two questions actually. I answered already one of them uh, from Madhab. Uh, the first question was Are Visualize Famo and VOSWIM two different software packages? That I already answered that uh, VO and VOSWIM are two different licenses, but they do work under the same installer. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can see, Lisha is sharing on the screen. You can see that the first two or the visual IFIMO, as you can see, new pro new IFIMO project, new continuous project. And then the third one, which is the bottom one, is the new swim project. This is the VO swim. So they are under the same installer, same inter interface, project manager, resource library, everything is going to be the same. However, the licenses are going to be different. So we have VO license, we have VO swim license, we have VO dual license, which is a combination of both. Right now, what you're seeing is VO dual. Um, and also, just a heads up about the new ECA legislation coming out. I'm just reviewing the draft um, in the design consideration of uh, the new legislation, the new ECA legislation. There are two items that uh, will actually um, require um, so many of the new subdivision planning to do the manhole INI analysis. And as per today, the only software that can do the manhole INI analysis is VOSWIM. Uh, no other software can do the manhole INI analysis. And then the reason of that is because Visual IFIMO and VOSWIM are based on Ontario legislation. So, and other softwares, they're like they're not focused on uh, Ontario legislation. However, VOSWIM and VO are based on Ontario. So. We follow the legislation of Ontario. So also in upcoming sessions, we also cover the manhole INI analysis. Um, so there is another question from Asif. Um, so Lisha, I'm going to ask that question uh, from you and then uh, feel free to answer it. The question says, in the VO model, if a user creates design storms using the open, open source library for a project, then a second user opens the same project using VO. Why is the second user unable to see the design storm in the open resource library? The resource library, right? <clears throat> this one depends. So the first user, right? He created. Is it first? Is the is the computer the, the computer which had the software? Is it on a remote shared computer or it's like a local computer? each user or model they have themselves. For example, right, if the software myself, my software here installed on my local computer, so my resource library for here for sure it will only be accessible by myself because my software installed on my local computer. And then Jason, Jason has another laptop or computer and she, he also installed VO on his computer and laptop. So for sure, his resource library will be different from mine. But but if it's like a remote computer, right? You have a one computer that everyone can access, and you install the uh, the the software on that computer. Normally, the, everyone should be able to see the the same resource library here. So I'm going to rephrase it. Um, so my question is. I'm I'm going to try to rephrase Asif's question. Um, so, if if I have a resource library on my computer, for sure it's going to be different than yours, Lisha. Yeah. But the question is, if I add a storm to a model from okay. my resource library, and if I save that project, if I share that project will, with you, will you be able to see that rainfall that I added from my resource library? 
No, no, that one will only be able to say in the in your ring group data here, because when you say send the file, right, you only send your project file. You are not sending the re your resource library. Resource library by itself is organized by another file or it's like a database on your computer. So when you send the file, when you send your or you send your project, right? It's it's like here, right? You, you're just sending those two files or maybe the redundant. So that's just your project file. It's not your resource library. So that's why when you open your project file, it won't able to allow you to open your resource library. That's yeah, I'm, uh, but what I'm talking about is not the resource library. If mm -hmm. I have, if I added some, uh, if I create my own resource library, yeah. And if I add some of those data, some of the rainfall data to a model yeah. that doesn't exist in the default resource library, if I share that project, I already added those data to the to the uh, rainfall group. Yeah. Will you be able to see those data in the rainfall group if it is added? Yeah, that okay. should be. That should sure. be. If there is an issue, right, send us the, the project file and then we will investigate. But normally that should be the case. Yeah, but make sure you send both files, right? The data file oh, yeah. and the VOPRJ because VOPRJ is just like a parameter or like the project like those files. So V data is more like the ring data, this this type of thing that you will you will need. So normally result is fine, right? You don't have results and people just rerun it. But those two are, are, are like a must. People must share. Right. So make sure if you want to share a project with your colleague or with someone else, make sure you share both of these files with each other. Before I ask a CS question, I'm going to um, ask the follow up of Asif. Asif said, but in the default uh, resource library, both Jason and you can see the TRC storms. Both of you also can see the, uh, the hazel. Yeah, I, I can ask, answer that question because also we do have a default in resource library, which is already embedded in the software. Everyone who is using the software anywhere in the globe can actually see uh, the default. They, they will be able to see the default of the resource library. You can add some storms to that as per your need. But if you add, so you're modifying the resource library as per your need, you won't be able to share that resource library with someone else. Uh, you only have it for your own uh, computer. Uh, and also, uh, if we add some other data to our resource library, which may be the case in the future, because I was we were talking with Cloca, uh, CVC, they may actually want to share some data with us because we keep improving and we keep developing the software. If we add something, if we add some sort of new data to the software, you will be able to see it in the resource library no matter what. It's, it's, it will become the default. Uh, do you want to add anything to that or do you want me to ask the next question? Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. So those are like default. Default is like become with the software. Even it's, even it's like a new, like a like plan new uh, computer after install, they will have those. And if you really want to share your resource library to another person, so you can just export, like export here, right? You can export it and then share, and people, other people can import, and they will be able to use it. Yeah. Right. Um, so this is, I believe, the last question. Um, yeah. Asi asks, in VO, toolbox contains LID features, for instance, chambers and etc. Mm -hmm. I would like to, to use it for the modeling, but it only accepted the default chamber model with uh, which I've used uh, the different one. Uh, no. My question is, is there any possibility to add the different chamber model? Uh, this one, yes, we do only have those fixed one. It's like, uh, it's also like we work with another another party, so they give us those uh, default uh, default settings. If you have a new model, we need to maybe you can choose other. So here, right, manufacture other, and uh, you can give that those parameters. And I let's think this one. Let me check if you can edit or it's calculated. Oh, this one is 
it's kind of also calculate. OK, this one. Yeah, I think you can try to use the other, but this one, right? This one and this one. Yes, they are from the Steve Ford one. The others, you can make some addition here. Uh, but I mean, depends which type of chamber you want to or you want to implement, you want to use which type of chamber. Do you have all those specific uh, uh, model equations that you want to use in the in the chamber? Or we can we can think about and uh, to see if we can include that in the software. Uh, and uh, and uh, those parameters, you think they are sufficient for your for your design, or you need more? Yes, like which type? It's very really like which type of chamber model that you have. Thank you, Lisha. Now, also, Asia, I just wanted to let you know that in future, so I I believe it's going to be a fifth, sixth, or seventh session of the webinar. I got to go and check it out. That we will have um, the. Uh, some sessions for LIDs specifically, so we also will cover LIDs in upcoming sessions as well. Um, so stay tuned every other Wednesdays. That was the first session. We will have the next session on 25th of May. Uh, so feel free to join and come by and check out the, the webinar 25th, the same time. And then the next session is going to be 8th of June. So mark your calendar, launch and learn every other Wednesday is going to happen. Stay tuned. We're going to have uh, more uh, webinars. We will invite more people uh, from conservation authorities, municipalities. Uh, we will also have Edward Graham on board with other webinars as well. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you so very much for staying with us. Thank you so very much, Leisha. Um, I already put the LinkedIn page as well as the Twitter page of ours. Make sure you click on it. Follow us on LinkedIn as well as Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, let us know if you have any question. Your license file, if you already don't have VO, your license file is available. There is no limitation. It's going to expire on May 14th. Um, go check it out. We're going to publish the video that I recorded about this session uh, in 24 hours. Check out our website. Uh, if you want, just go check it out. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask us. We're always there for you guys. Hope you, ha you have an amazing uh, Wednesday, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.